Following on from my talk at DotScale 2015, um, I wanted to present a bit more about the benefits of an eventually consistent AP system uh, using CRDTs versus a strictly consistent CP system. I've got the link uh, there, as I saw this morning, most people raised their hand when they said it was their first uh, dot scale. So more information about the specific data types um, in the React database and how they behave when a conflict occurs. First, a quick reminder of the motivation. Um, in applications and services we build today, we see more and more benefit in them being distributed. So distributing a system can provide fault tolerance, greater availability, and lower latency. Deploying an application or service in multiple countries means it's closer to your global user base, it can be faster, and it can improve the customer experience. But if your database is distributed across three continents and connectivity between those continents uh, is affected, what do you do? An available system can handle this breakdown in connectivity by continuing to accept operations uh, on the data and allowing multiple versions of the same value to exist in, in different places. When the connectivity is restored, the system then has to decide uh, how to resolve these multiple values. It could keep all of the updated values and return them all when a client requests the data, or it could attempt to resolve the conflicts using its own resolution logic. In the first case, a uh, system returns all the values to the client application, and the client development team then go about writing a merge function, which is applied so a single correct value uh, is returned for subsequent requests. So there's no data loss, the system's highly available, and you get the correct value. We know this is the correct thing to do, uh, as it provides a more available service and allows you to use specific business logic uh, to determine the final value. But it can be difficult to reason about and can slow down development as you write numerous different merge functions. Moving the resolution logic from the client back to the system would mean fewer headaches for developers and faster implementation on a wider set of use cases. Uh, when this company uh, were first looking at React to improve their service availability, data types were a significant factor in them feeling they could model their use cases and data effectively. So CRDTs, or convergent replicated data types, offer us a resolution uh, semantic we can apply to eventually consistent data modeling. They always converge to a single correct value. Uh, they provide strong eventual consistency, and you get the uh, availability and low latency of using a distributed system. So let's look at a few that have been implemented in React. Uh, we have registers. So you have to use these within a map data type, which is something I'll cover at the end. Uh, but think of them like a single key value pair, but available with a more complicated uh, data structure. So you get greater flexibility for modeling your data in, in one map. Registers are as simple and use last right wins logic uh, to choose the most chronologically recent value. This is okay since the whole map isn't affected by that last right wins choice, uh, it's just the register. Then we have flags, uh, also used exclusively within a map uh, in React. They hold a true or false value, which can be updated independently of the other map values. So in this case, we don't have to rewrite the same value to the register when changing the flag. Uh, in React's case, if you see conflicting values for a flag, you see true and false at a merge, uh, then we default to true. So we kind of stay positive in that sense. We also have counters. Uh, so they can be used on their own or within a map. Uh, we use a PN counter to keep track of all increments and decrements that are made by an actor. Um, talked about actors a bit this morning, but an actor in this case represents a server within the distributed system. And the value is the difference between the sum of all positives and the sum of all negatives. Uh, during merge, the maximum positive and negative values for each actor are used. We have sets. Uh, can also be used to store specific key or use within a map. Um, easy to imagine sets. Uh, use case would be things like your followers list on Twitter, um, attendees at an event, or a playlist on Spotify. Uh, sets support groups operations, for example, adding element X and removing element Y in the same update. They also have the add win semantic, meaning concurrent add and remove operations on the same element result in the element being in the set. And then lastly, maps. Maps can contain other maps. Uh, so they allowed real flexibility when building a complex data structure in this eventually consistent system. If a field is added or updated and concurrently removed by different actors, the add or update will win during the merge, continuing this kind of add win semantic. So hopefully this has demonstrated how CRDTs or React data types can be used to build more complex data structures that resolve to single correct values in a highly available, eventually consistent system, all without the headache of having to write those merge functions yourself. Uh, there's a bit more information at the link at the bottom. Thank you. <laughs>